Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, happy Saturday to you all. Hopefully, your weekend is going terrifically. Or if you're watching this at any other point in the week, hopefully, you're having a great day nonetheless. I've got taken the last few days off for a multitude of reasons, partially down to me completely getting my research schedule wrong. Don't do that, kids. Make sure you are staying up to speed on stuff like that. But, um, well, it is Saturday. We are back. And, of course, Saturday means one thing and one thing only. Welcome to episode 14 of season 2 of OSD Saturdays here on the channel. This is going to be... We are finally finishing up the month of February from this year. And, oof. I say finally finishing up February, uh, March is going to be even longer because we had like 20 odd something OSCs that dropped in March that I really want to get around to and that's a lot of music. But what well, OSC Saturdays is a terrific time, it's one of my favorite things we do on the channel and I figured let's go back and enjoy some of the OSTs that I missed while I was getting my life in order. So on the docket to finish off the month of February, Mr. Bang Yedam. Uh, we have a little bit of Miss Oogie Idol, The Vane, Mr. Bohun, we haven't heard from him in a hot minute. Super band guys, the super band homies out there will know exactly who. And then Mizizo of I've doing a tune for a webtoon. Um, I've also, uh, as of right now, working on, I think, completing their comebacks for the I've Switch album. Um, terrific album, by the way, but... Now, this is gonna be a lot of fun. I don't think have we had a solo ESO OST yet? I don't think we have. If I if I if we have and I've covered it, I mean, if it exists, we've probably covered it. I just don't remember it. But well, either way, this is gonna be cool because I feel like I haven't heard ESO sing solo since her Image and Service episode, and that was from Blue Blood. So that must have been the. Uh, I Vive album, the studio length album that we got last year. Cool stuff. All right. Anyways, four songs to go. So let's jump into it. Here we go. I had to stock up on water because I mentioned in episode 13, which was for this current week's OST Saturday, it got up to 30 degrees here in the, the Japan's where I am, and it's a humid 30, and it's toasty. It's very toasty. Um, so, um, and with the amount of waffling I do, I'm gonna need to stay hydrated. Remember, remember, kids, hydrate before you dehydrate. Anyways. Let's get started, Mr. Yedam with this song, My Offer, branding in Songsu. Actually, before we even get started with Mr. Yedam, we have special clips for all four songs, which is probably going to be a rare occasion on OSC Saturday this year because of copyright stuff with the official MVs for these drama OSTs. So this is cool. This is a very rare occasion. Hopefully, this isn't the only time this happens this year, but four songs, all four of them have special clips. Very cool stuff. Anyways, Mr. Yedam, Branding and Songsu. We will be coming back to the show later in the episode with the vein with Mr. Bohun. Um, and this is a show that we have been here for a few times now, I think. Well, as technically you've been on here twice, because I'm pretty sure we've done both Branding and Songsu songs now. So, part three, Mr. Yedam, let's see what he's brought to the table, shall we? Here we go. I never got to know Treasure while Yedan was still a part of the member lineup, but ever since he's gone solo and I've been like really tapping into his voice, oh, very tasteful voice. Interesting vocal stacking going on. Yeah. 
His voice is stacked on top of itself, but with just the faintest of delays. It's either that or a reverb effect that's making that. Yeah, it's only in that chorus part too. His way of like changing what vocal tone he uses is very cool. Because he doesn't use one voice for too long. Switching to the hum on that note too is such a cool idea. I don't know why I expected that course to last longer. Love how far the songs dropped there, though. Kind of like with his solo debut, it, with the range of vo different vocal kind of deliveries Yenam is capable of producing in one song is really impressive. Oh! Oh, love the way he kind of finished that at the end, just boom, vocal only. That's very nice. Yeah, no, Yedam has been really impressive to follow. Hey, again, I mentioned earlier, I didn't follow Treasure all that closely back when he was still in the lineup. And, oh, well, I mean, I knew Treasure's music. I quite like Treasure's music. They bring this EDM banger vibe that not many people do at the level that Treasure do. And, I mean, some of my favorite stuff is from back when Yedam was in the lineup. Like, I love you, Sarange. Oh my, that song, it goes crazy hard. But, that's besides the point, we're here to talk about Yedam. Yedam, I got to know somewhat well through his solo debut last year. It was terrific. I think he's got, he's got a sense and this understanding of how his voice works and where his voice works. It's not just like he knows what his voice sounds like, he knows exactly how and when to use one specific type of voice. And he's not afraid to switch it up at a really quick rate. And even on a song like My All, where it is very much a pretty slower song, he's still able to control what voice he's using, when he uses it, and goes into the like archive, or goes into his skill tree, we're talking from like video games terms and just switch on a whim to a vocal vocal tone that suits that small section in a song better he, he'll do that and he knows when to do that and it's just oh, his musical brain must be so huge like so humongous big you know oh if you get that reference shout out you but honestly yedam's grasp of music even through his what his image and service I know he was on episode 100 too, and that was also really good fun to watch, but he he is one of those artists that I just want to like, I want to understand how his musical brain works. There are certain artists that I want to do that with, oftentimes it's like in-group producers, so like, I would love to understand Soyeon from Idol's musical brain. I would love to understand, you know, Hong Jung of 80s i would love to get a feel for the three racha members just people who get stuck in like up and close with the music that they produce and just how their brain works yadam is one of those people for me Oof. and 
I guess, well, speaking of Idol, let's move on to a little bit of Oogie one time. Of course, she had her solo debut, even though she had stuff beforehand. But she dropped a solo album recently, which was quite good fun indeed. But we have an OST from Oogie. Although this technically predates her solo debut because this was from February. But you get my point. This is Bad Liar from the song Mary, or from the drama Mary, My Husband. Oogie can do a lot. Her low vocals, one of my favorites in the business. And if, if it's a kind of slower song where she can really let that low vocal shine, oh, I am going to be so on board with this. So here we go. Oh, hold on. It's got a snappiness to it. Oh, hold on. We got a groove here. to finish the chorus I was gonna say before we got this flourish that it kind of reminds me of an idle b-side from it probably would have been tomboy era right I forget what the name of the song is that I'm thinking of but it feels like an idle b-side it's got this really nice groove to it but that chorus has definitely switched it up enough for me where it's like, oh, this is different, different. That hold on the high note leading into the fill that brings on this chorus is so cool. It's got the kind of palm muted, like scratchy guitar in there. Got quite a bouncy bass part. Having said that, the synth work is very nice. Plucky sense is what like put in my mind that idle b-side that I can't remember oh. Not bad not bad at all. It's got a really interesting Kind of flourish to it. It's not the flourish. I would have expected it takes away that retro synthy feel and swings it into more of a funky beat and I'm not mad at it by any means and I think it's a song that we can kind of flex a lot of that breathy vocal of hers 
but also you know when she wants to put the hammer down a little bit she can she can add some power into the vocal and it's it's a good showcase of what Ugi can do in terms of I think vocal power which I really like and in terms of like range I mean Ugi can, Ugi's got a wide range in terms of vocal like scale in terms of what she can do and just hearing stuff like this is really showcases like that flexibility of hers the vocal flexibility that she's capable of doing it's hard for me to like approach an Ugi solo release of any magnitude and go at it from a completely impartial like point of view because of how much of an impact Bonnie and Clyde left on me and I mentioned that when we checked out Ugi's solo stuff earlier this month earlier this month yeah earlier this month but for me Ugi set the bar so tremendously high with Bonnie and Clyde that it's like she can produce a whole bunch of solo music and it's going to be a challenge to like usurp that and I feel like that's kind of you know entirely self-inflicted mind you but has kind of ruined Ugi's solo releases for me which makes me a little bit sad because Ugi is one of my favorite female vocalists in k-pop right now just because she has a tone and a range that not many people can do not at the level that she can do it at but as an OST I kind of like it I, I'm curious to see how it's used though because I don't have a very clear mental image in terms of like how it could have been used within the show so I may go and watch the MB in my free time hmm all right we keep her moving track on number th no that's that's for album listens next song the vein um or mr che boon um vocal extraordinaire uh does a whole lot of stuff but for me vocal extraordinaire uh from season one of super band part of oh gosh what was her group called never give up never never if you watch Superbad, you will understand. If you didn't, um, shoot, I forget what the live stage is. Uh, their final group did a cover of you know, Never Enough, Never, with Bowen on lead vocal, and it is one of the most glorious and powerful live vocal performances I've heard on a competition show. Maybe second to some like king of mass singer performances it's that good um i'll 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 link it in a comment down below but yeah mr bowen it's been a hot minute since we've heard from uh bowen so i'm very much excited for it this is breaking rocks from branding and songs we are back with the show once again and well you know what i'm so excited oh we've got the intensity hello mr bowen i miss you sir Bandish Build it up. There it is. It's that classic rocker voice, but... Oh, get up in your head voice one time. And technically, with the vein, we are delving into the world of K-Bands to an extent. Because, like, you really don't get a very rock-oriented K-pop vocal these days, or really ever. You have to go into, like, the K-Band region, or the crossover group direction. But, oh... God, that grit and the roughness you get in the breaking rocks. Spectacular.
It's a very minimal vo uh, chorus from like the vocal point of view, just because it I'm breaking rocks, and then you get the choir in the background. But I'm breaking rules. Oh, yes, that is what I'm talking about. I'm breaking, I'm breaking rules. Oh, I'm breaking rules this time around. I just clocked that. Shit. Absolutely. He is in his bag when, when it comes to songs like this. It's... Oh. Listen, man. Super Band produce some absolute ludicrous talent. If, like, if we're talking like graduated acts from Super Band, we're talking groups like Bandage. Uh, we're getting quite heavy into the indie realm now, but the vein bandage lucy hopipola and then we're breaking off into like solo acts and stuff hong isaac or isaac hong uh what who else have we had oh yeah mr kim sung from the rose was also on that show and it's just Usually, I hate comp competition like survival shows and stuff. Superband is the sole exception to that. I have never had that much fun with a competition show than with Superband Season 1. It's so good. And just the, the talent that came out of that. And as a big advocate for the K-band genre of, mu of Korean music, oh, it was so up my alley. And it's... I cannot emphasize enough just how fun that Super Band Watch Along was. We did it roughly around this time last year. We did an episode a week for 14 weeks or whatever, and then we did a little like powwow uh, closing few streams and stuff. Actually, all of those, all the episodes and VODs are on the spreadsheet if you're ever curious about those. But Bo Boon is. Oh! So much fun to listen to. And I missed his voice, man. It's so good. And then, Mizizo of Ive with I'm the Queen in This Life is a webtoon, which we have covered on a handful of occasions, I think. I don't know if handful is the right word for it, but we've covered the, sh uh, the webtoon more than once. But this is the song May Lily for the webtoon I'm the Queen in This Life. And we have a special clip with captions. Congratulations, viewers. All right, here we go. Yiso. On I the, uh, during I Switch era was different gravy. I'm very curious to hear what pre I Switch Isa was like. And also, if we're talking about unique vocal colors. Oh, the way she built that up and then just let it go whispery to transition into the pre-chorus. Was not expecting it to get this heavy and intense for the chorus. I kind of like it though. Oh, that little flip she did at the end was gorgeous. song just ramps up really brings up mean right hook on that drop oh 
Do you all hear that very subtle flip she does at the end of that May Lily line? It's so cool. She like throws it into that head voice for that split second. Actually, she's doing a lot of flipping back and forth, both so up and down. That's caught me off guard a little bit. That is... That... Wow. Okay. When I think of, like, an OSC and Izo's voice, for some reason, it goes, like, springtimey. Like, light, a little bit floral, a little bit bright, that kind of vibe. So going this kind of intense dark sound was not what I expected to hear from Izo. Am I pleasantly surprised by it? Very. It's really good. It's it's the shock factor of it all. The big release into the dramatic chorus is one, but it, the fact that this voice of hers that is very much quite light, a little bit airy, but has that very distinct... Uh, what's the best? Is it, is it nasally? Is that the word I'm looking for? But her vocal color has a very distinct little, like... Um, a little different something to it, right? And for me, that charming point really works on a handful of genres, but for me, it leans into that brighter, like, lighter stuff. So to have her not just, like, kind of accept the fact that that char vocal charm is there, but lean even further into that on a song that has completely flipped the script on like what i associate with that type of vocal that is the mind-blowing element for me and she pulls it off and the little the flips she does is it's subtle but it's there and it, it's kind of smooth wow okay easel so maybe 2024 is the year that iso just kind of cr is cracked because you know, this dropped before the I've Switch album, obviously, because this dropped three months ago now. But even on the I've Switch album, like if we're going through the like the tracks, even with Heya, and just kind of a, oh excuse me, even across the board, Iso this era with I've Switch on like the B sides and the two title tracks went off. She was on different gravy on that album and it looks like she's just been on different gravy this year in general that's kind of cool that's also slightly terrifying because <laughs> if this is where she's going this year where can she go for the rest of the year where is she gonna end up by the end of the year oh man oh <laughs> what a cool way to end february's roundup eh like we got a we got a very tasty lineup and actually I want to find something. I had a thought while we were listening to that last ESO clip. Uh, so, Yimujin Service is a show that we used to cover here on the channel. We don't do it much anymore because of time constraints, just because I'm uh, ridiculously busy. But I'm pretty sure I, I typed in what I was writing, uh, or saying, instead of what I was supposed to type, because I can't multitask, apparently. Yeah, every single person we covered today has been on Imogen Service, all minus the vein. That's really cool. What? Wait, that's really cool. I don't think we've ever had something like that. Oh, what a cool kawinky dink. Anyways, OSC Saturdays. These are always a great time, and there's a reason why we do this every week, because they're always going to be a great time. I love them. Hopefully you do as well, but... I am going to wrap it up for this week's 
rendition of OSC Saturday. And let me see what's on the docket for March. We'll give you a little bit of a teaser. So there's 23 songs on the list. Uh, we may cut that down to 20 just for time reasons. So if we do 20, we can do four weeks of five. And then we can just kind of weave that into every single week moving forward. But we've got the likes of Hoshi from 17, Dayong of Wuju Sonia, um, Hyojin of On and Off, Cherry Bullet's Bora, RIP Cherry Bullet, Xenary Heroes, QWER, Busok Soon, Nizu Sweet Notification is on here, another Ship Senchi song. Uh, we've got a we've got some like infinite stuff on here. We've got more idol stuff. We've got NCT stuff. We've got Espa. We've got Hong Isak. We've got quite a nice list for March. So I'm very excited to get into them moving forward. But you know what? As of right now, we are gonna finish it off here. Thank you all for watching along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. One last request from me today. Let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world, whether it be you know checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for someone, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness that may brighten up someone else's day to day and know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy in there who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend ally and a shoulder to lean on whatever you need me so take care of yourselves take care of each other spread the love and i will see you next time bye, -bye.